Hello, my name is uh, Valdemar Paholik. I am science teacher in Central Iceland High School and I would like to explain formation of uh, Long, Island, uh, Long Island's North Shore coastline. To do it, we're going to look at some characteristics of this coastline. Um, this is a DM map of uh, Long Island put together by Bennington. And what we see here is uh, we have those peninsulas which are separated by, by bays. Those bays occupy tunnel valleys. Tunnel valleys are, the f and are valleys which are curved by pressurized water underneath the glacier, which runs to the outskirts of the glacier. Um, what else you can see here is uh, our, our moraine, which uh, is pierced by those valleys. And the moraine drips, drapes from one valley to another. 20,000 years ago, uh, so much water on our planet was trapped in the glaciers that actually our ocean level was around 300 feet below present level. And uh, to find more evidences how this coastline became to be, we have to go and look at the topography of Long Island Sound. Um, when we, this is Long Island, Connecticut, and Long Island Sound. What we see here is uh, the very deep trench which runs along the coast of Long Island. Now this trench uh, is with a very significant depth, 600, 700 feet below present water level. Um, imagine that uh, glacier which was here uh, had the thickness only of uh, 300 feet, that depth which goes to 700 feet gonna definitely uh, rule the direction in which the ice is going to flow. Then what else you're gonna, we see here is a lot of those valleys which uh, run perpendicular to, uh, to the main trench. And what else is interesting that those valleys correspond with uh, bays and the area which is between the valleys, uh, is area of the peninsulas and this area correspond to the to the bedrock, which is uh, between between valleys. Um, now, if you look closer, we'll see that there is a lot of boulders. The concentration of these boulders correspond with peninsulas, and again with the area between valleys. Um, we're gonna take one more look at, at the map of Long Island Sound, but from uh, different studies. Studies by Lewis and Stone. And they, uh, on the base of uh, seismic reflection, produce this map. What we see here is, uh, is the bedrock. Um, now, we see the deep bedrock which uh, runs on the expansion of Hartford Basin, and it's uh, filled with the same sediments probably as Hartford Basin. Um, what else? We, we see Cretaceous sediments. And the thing which is the most important for our investigation, we have location of, uh, of valleys which, which are curved in those, those Cretaceous sediments that are right here. Let's put those two maps together. And now we see that uh, uh, we have this deep trench, uh, this overlaid laid map, and we're going to just put two location of those, uh, those valleys on, on back on this, this map and we'll see how those valleys correspond uh, with base on, on Long Island. We, we see also that uh, uh, peninsulas correspond with the area in, of the bedrock in between and to remind you we have those boulders here which as well correspond with peninsulas. Then imagine now that we are inside the glacier and we try to analyze what exactly happened. Then we are standing inside the trench. There are those uh, perpendicular valleys and this is the wall uh, and we are standing facing, facing south. The ice is uh, moving in this direction. Area between valleys become the obstacle on the, on the uh, path of the glacier. Then this area is going to be abraded the most. And uh, we can imagine the situation where ice approaches and just scrapes, scrapes this obstacle um, or as well. There could be some flocking going on when uh, temperate glacier 
uh, presses on the obstacle and uh, become become water, and the water runs into cracks, and when it uh, decompresses, it becomes an ice again, and those pieces of, of chunks of of um, uh, of rocks freezes to freeze to the bottom of the glacier can be carried to the Long Island. Yeah. Um, what else we, we, we see here? That uh, the walls of those valleys, they support the ice. That's why pressure decreases in this area and we have those um, equipotential lines with bent and of course water going to be drained to the area which is less pressure and, and leaves us with ice which is uh, much drier in the vicinity of the valleys and ice which is very wet and a lack of water and it uh, makes this ice move faster in those directions and slower, slower moving over the obstacle. One more time at the view of, of this area, but from, from area view. Uh, we have those, those valleys which are enriched in water. The ice moves much faster, goes to the outskirt of the glacier, uh, it starts to melt very, very fast. That's why we observe here the bend of, uh, of the moraine. Uh, the water removes the material and and deposits it in form of uh, an outwash fan. Now the area in between those valleys uh, carries a lot of sediment, but it's the dry ice, move uh, much slower, but, but it's gonna eventually move further south because it melts slower. Then uh, after everything melts, you can imagine that we're gonna have uh, rich in sediment here, which gonna sticks out, that's a positive uh, topography. We have those uh, valleys which are going to uh, be later filled with water and that's our base. And again we have our peninsula, bay, peninsula and, and bay goes, goes this direction. Then uh, this is our Long Island coast. And in conclusion we can say that uh, mm, uh, formation of uh, North Shore's uh, coast was directed by topography of Long Island, Long Island Sound. Uh, we can also conclude that uh, a recession of the moraine is caused by area where we have faster melting versus uh, area where we have peninsula, which is uh, slower, slower moving ice, but, uh, uh, but melting much uh, lower rate. And, uh, we observe that there is, uh, there is evidence of trails of boulders, which uh, those trails run, uh, run with uh, peninsulas. Thank you for watching. Valdemar Paholik from CA High School.